Well, hello there. Here we are with chapter two, lesson number 11. It's the third lesson on implicit differentiation, looking at second derivatives. Now, something you need to be able to do in higher maths is to work out the second derivative. And you need to be able to do that when we are working with implicit differentiation. Let's jump into a couple of examples. So example one, the function y equals f of x is defined implicitly by the equation x squared plus 2xy equals 1. Find expressions for both dy by dx, the first derivative, and d2y by dx squared, the second derivative, in terms of x and y. So the first thing you want to think is, right, well, this is the equation we are starting with, x squared plus 2xy equals 1. So we need to differentiate that. How then could we differentiate that? Mark, yeah, you can just differentiate it straight away. You're perfectly right. If you differentiate x squared, that's dead easy. Differentiating 2xy though, Mark, what would you do? Product rule, you got it, good, because you've got 2x times y. You're multiplying two functions. So... Let u equal 2x and let v equal y. If you differentiate 2x, that will give you 2. And if you differentiate y with respect to x, we'll differentiate y goes to 1, but we'd multiply that by dy by dx. So if you differentiate x squared then, that'll go to 2x, but differentiating 2xy, that will be u dash v plus uv dash. So we'd have 2 times y plus 2x times dy by dx. From there, what do you notice, Danielle, about every single term? Yeah, it's divisible by 2, so let's divide everything by 2. So now we've got x plus y plus x dy by dx equals 0. We are wanting to find expressions for both dy by dx and d2y by dx squared in terms of x and y, so we need an expression for dy by dx in terms of x and y. In other words, we want dy by dx equals. So let's think about that. Uh, that line we will come back to in just a minute. But to get dy by dx on its own, what we would do first of all is undo anything we are adding or subtracting. So subtract x from both sides, subtract y from both sides. That'll leave us with the dy by dx term on the left hand side and that alone. From there to get dy by dx on its own, well we divide both sides by x. Therefore, dy by dx would equal negative x take away y divide by x. And that is going to be your expression for dy by dx. We have answered that. Next, what we want to do is we want to find an expression for d2y by dx squared. So doing that, Drew, what could you do? Yeah, what you could do is you could apply the quotient rule here and you could differentiate. Perfectly right. What else could we do? Does anybody see a different way? Joseph, what else could you do? Yeah, you could also go back a couple of lines to this line here. We have differentiated at that line, and we could, just to get the second derivative, differentiate this line. What's probably easier is differentiating this line that is highlighted. If we do that, then we will avoid fractions within fractions. Because if we apply the quotient rule, well, differentiating y is going to give us dy by dx. So we're going to have dy by dx in this massive fraction. So we get fractions within fractions. It's going to be very ugly, make it quite confusing. So let's go back up to this line. It may be easier. It will still give you the same answer, though. So if you want to try it the other way, feel free. So with that then, I've gone back up to that line. That's the line that was highlighted. And I want to differentiate this. So differentiating x, dead easy, I can do it. Differentiating y, dead easy, I can do it. Differentiating x times dy by dx. Chuka, what do you think? x times dy by dx? Product rule, you got it, good. Again, you're thinking of the product rule because you've got a product here. So u is going to be x and v is going to be dy by dx. u dash then, if you differentiate x with respect to x, you get one. If you differentiate dy by dx, Muhammad, what does that give you? Good, differentiating dy by dx, the first derivative, gives you the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. Woo! From there then, if you differentiate x, that will give you one. If you differentiate y with respect to x, you would also get one, but you'd have dy by dx. And then you'd have plus, and differentiating this, remember, product rule u dash v plus uv dash. So u dash times v is going to be one times dy by dx, which is dy by dx, plus u times v dash, so x times d2y by dx squared. Perfect. From there then, well, if you look at this, I've got a dy by dx and I'm adding another dy by dx. So how many dy by dx's have I got? 
two, you got it. So I've got one plus two dy by dx plus x d2y by dx squared equals zero. Where could you go from there? We are wanting to get d2y by dx squared in terms of x and y, which means we don't really want to have dy by dx. Anybody think of what we could do with dy by dx? Oliver. Yeah, if you look back to the last page, going back for a few seconds, well, we had here dy by dx equals negative x take away y over x. So going back the way again, which means that you can swap dy by dx for negative x take away y over x. That's what we just worked out. We got our expression for dy by dx. So if you do that then, well, you're going to have 1 plus 2 times this negative x take y over x plus d2y by dx squared equals 0. Perfect. From there then, well, because here I've got this fraction, I'm dividing by x, what's going to be easier is if you multiply each part, multiply this by x, multiply this by x, that will cancel out that fraction, and then multiply this by x as well, and obviously the 0, but that will still stay a 0. So really what we should do there to clear the fraction is multiply each part by x. So that will give us x plus that divide by x will cancel out, leaving us with 2 times the negative x take away y. This will give us x squared, d2y by dx squared, and that will stay as 0. From there, we can multiply the brackets. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. 2 times negative y is negative 2y, and that will stay as plus x squared, d2y by dx squared equals 0. From there then, well, if you look at it, you've got an x take away 2x. x take away 2x is negative x, and keep the rest of it just as it is. From there, we want to get d2y by dx squared. We want an expression for that in terms of x and y. So we can keep that on the left-hand side, add x to both sides, and add 2y to both sides. And that will leave us with x squared d2y by dx squared equals, we've added x to both sides, so we get x over here, and we've added 2y to both sides, so we get 2y over here. To get d2y by dx squared on its own, we would divide by, you got it, x squared. Therefore, d2y by dx squared would equal x plus 2y over x squared. And that will be your answer. Example 2, the function y equals f of x is defined implicitly by the equation y squared minus x squared equals 4. Find expressions for both dy by dx and d2y by dx squared in terms of x and y. So very, very similar to the last example. First thing you want to think is, right, well, to get the first derivative, I need to differentiate. So differentiating y squared take away x squared equals 4. Differentiating y squared, you would get 2y. But what else do you need? Good, dy by dx. Differentiate the x squared, and you would get 2x, and uh, differentiate 4, and that's just 0. From there, well, each term divides by 2, so I'm going to do that to make it easier. And then from there, well, you want dy by dx just on its own. So if you add x to both sides, you would get y dy by dx equals x. And then from there, dy by dx would equal, if you divide both sides by y, dy by dx equals x over y. So we've got our expression for dy by dx. Woo! From there, we need to go on and find d2y by dx squared. So really, we're going to differentiate our dy by dx. Connor, how could you do that, though? What would you do? Good. Again, you've got a choice. You could either use the quotient rule here, u dash v minus uv dash over v squared, or you could go back up to this line. And if you go back up to this line and differentiate this, then it saves having your fractions within fractions. It's maybe going to make everything a little less messy. Again, it will still give you the same answer, but it just maybe makes it slightly easier. So let's go back up to that line y dy by dx minus x equals zero. Let's go over the page. Taking that line then, I want to differentiate that. For this, Syra, what do you think? Good, you are going to have to use the product rule here, and you're using the product rule because it's y times dy by dx. You've got a product there. You're multiplying them both together. So u is going to be y, and v is dy by dx. Awesome. u dash, if we differentiate y with respect to x, Ira, good, that's dy by dx. And if you differentiate dy by dx, what's that? Good, that is the second derivative. If you differentiate the first derivative, you get the second. So dy by dx would differentiate to d2y by dx squared. From there then, we have u dash v plus uv dash 
if we are differentiating y dy by dx. So u dash times v is dy by dx times dy by dx plus u times v dash, so y times d2y by dx squared. Takeaway x would differentiate to become takeaway 1, and 0 is just going to stay as 0. From there, well, what could you do next? We're wanting our expression for d2y by dx squared in terms of x and y. Looking at it, we've also got dy by dx's. Good. Looking back to that last page just a second, you can see that dy by dx, we found that that is x over y. So going back here, we can replace dy by dx with x over y. So from the last page, dy by dx equals x over y, which means dy by dx times dy by dx really becomes x over y times x over y. And the rest of it would just stay. So we'd have plus y d to y by dx squared take away 1 equals 0. From there, if we have x over y times x over y, sugra, what would you get? Good, that's going to give you x squared over y squared. We still have a plus y d to y by dx squared equals, take away 1 equals 0. From there, well, if you think about it, you've got the fraction here, which maybe makes things a bit complicated. So take each part, take this part here, take this part here, and the negative one, and also the zero, and you're multiplying everything by y squared. If you do that, well, it will cancel out this fraction here. So times that by y squared, that will give you just x squared, times the y, d2y by dx squared by y squared, that will give you y cubed, d2y by dx squared, times the negative 1 by y squared, you get negative y squared, and times 0 by y squared, you get 0. From there, well, you're wanting to get the d2y by dx squared on its own, so subtract any of the terms without a d2y by dx squared in them from the left-hand side. So subtract x squared from both sides, and add on y squared to both sides. So if we add y squared to both sides, we'd have a y squared over here. And if we subtract the x squared from both sides, we'd have take away x squared. If you get this back to front, if you have negative x squared plus y squared, it's the same thing. It's absolutely fine. From there, you get d2y by dx squared. You want that in its own, so we'd have to get rid of that y cubed. So divide both sides by y cubed. Therefore, d2y by dx squared will equal y squared, take away x squared, divided by y cubed. And that is your expression for d2y by dx squared. Try some of these questions. It's a third lesson with implicit differentiation, looking at second derivatives. That is now it for implicit differentiation. There is a little bit later on, but try these. See how you get on. Page 36 in the workbook. Any problems, let me know. Have fun.